guys, it's the first week of September, which means it's officially the fall season. So today we wanted to go over some fall book recommendations we have for you guys, as well as going over some books we want to read this fall. We did do this video last year and we had such a fun time with it. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch it because we still stand by all of those recommendations. These ones are just newer and recent recommendations from us. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We have a lot of books to talk about today. So the first book recommendation I have is The Shadows by Alex North. Last year I recommended The Whisper Man by this author and this year I'm recommending this one. This book was a psychological thriller about lucid dreams that end in murder. In this book we're following Paul as he returns to his hometown after a copycat murder mirrored something that happened in his past 25 years ago. This book was super atmospheric and creepy. It definitely focused more on the characters. So we're basically dealing with all the ramifications of that event that happened years ago but it was so good. I really enjoyed it. I think it would be a perfect read for the fall because of all of the spooky elements. I always love how this author has like these fantasy-esque stories that are woven in through the mystery. I know I had to include this one. The Whisper Man remains my favorite by this author, but this one's a close second. The first one I have is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. Our main character, Mika Moon, is a witch and she tries to keep to herself. She doesn't really hang around other witches, but she ends up getting the opportunity to train these three young witches that really just need schooling. There's a found family that forms. The vibes are just so cozy and cute and perfect. I know this author is going to write a second book as well, but I think it got pushed back. So I don't think I'm going to be able to read that one until next year. But I think this one is a perfect one to read this fall and I might even reread it. The next book I have is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This one is a super short read, but it is perfect for spooky season. This is a story of two eccentric sisters who live in their family's mansion. They are secluded up there and they are haunted by the secret from their past. This one is a little bit weird and creepy. There are murders that happen, so there's a little bit of that mystery. I think because of that, it could fit into that spooky theme. At no point in the story did I know what was going to happen next, so I thought it was super interesting, so I knew I had to include it. I can't wait to read more Shirley Jackson. One of my favorite mystery thrillers is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This one is absolutely crazy. We end up following a girl who is taking care of an elderly woman who can't speak, but she was accused of killing her whole family years ago. So this woman is just trying to get information on that. This was just such a fantastic read and I was honestly hooked from the first page and the twists in the end were so crazy and they just kept coming and I never saw any of them coming. Definitely one of my favorite mystery thrillers and if you have not read it yet, you have to read it this spooky season. Up next, I have the Shepherd King duet by Rachel Gillig. This is a completed duet. So if you're looking for a fantasy story that isn't gonna take you a super long time to read, I would highly recommend these two. This is a gothic fantasy about a maiden who must unleash the beast inside herself to save the kingdom. I really, really enjoyed it. I know this duet is known for its unique magic systems, but honestly, it's so atmospheric as well. I almost wish I would have saved these for the fall time. The plot is super intriguing from the start. There is a little bit of romance and I am myself obsessed with the magic in here. So perfect for the fall time. Definitely pick this up if you haven't read it yet. This will be the perfect opportunity to do so. The next one I have is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I would recommend this whole series for the fall time. I think it is just so perfect. I really like this one because we're following a group of teenagers who have these special abilities that land them in this FBI program where they solve cold cases. So there's always a mystery going on and you get to meet all of these kids and they're just so cute. They're honestly one of my favorite found families and there's also a little bit of a romance in there too. So it's just a good mix of different things. I have another mystery thriller recommendation and it is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I read this book last year and I loved it. In this story we follow a group of girls who send a killer to prison when they're 11 years old. This was twisty and spooky and it even had a little bit of a witchy feel to it. But overall I really enjoyed it and I didn't predict the ending so highly recommend. The next one I have is The House by Christina Lauren. This one was another crazy one but this one is a YA paranormal romance and this girl ends up falling for this strange boy but he has an even stranger house. This really just wasn't at all what I was expecting but in the best way possible and I was just locked in the entire time and waiting to see what was going to happen but I think readers of all ages would enjoy this one. I have a YA recommendation myself. This was Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. This is a young adult fantasy following a mother, daughter, and all of the bad choices that come back to haunt them. This was such a good read. It's twisty, it's spooky, there's witchcraft. The ending was nothing. 
as I expected. It was so good. If you love YA, definitely pick this one up. This one really surprised me and I wish I would have read it in October. The next one I have is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is another YA mystery thriller kind of spooky horror book. This is a LGBTQ plus book as well. So we're following Yadriel and he ends up summoning a ghost and he can't get rid of him. The ghost that he does bring back ends up trying to stay because he wants to figure out what happened to him. So there was really just a lot of roller coaster of emotions. The main characters and the settings made this such a comfort read for me. So I have Cersei by Madeline Miller. This isn't necessarily a book that takes place in the fall time, but the magic and gods and creatures that come with Greek mythology definitely give me that fall time feeling. So that's why I wanted to include it. This is an adaptation of a bunch of different Greek myths told in the perspective of Cersei. This is raw and emotional and heartbreaking, but it's beautifully written. If I'm thinking about the fall time with like a cozy blanket and a cup of tea, this is the book I'd want to be reading. The next one I have is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Y'all know I have to throw in a romance in this recommendation video. I think this one is the perfect one because we're dealing with vampires and werewolves. There's an arranged marriage to kind of form a political alliance, but there's also a big mystery going on in this book. The romance was so cute and I loved learning more about the werewolves and the vampires in this world. But I think this is a good option because it has a little bit of everything in there and I don't think it ever got boring. The last one I have for today was actually one of our literal besties book club books and it is The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. You guys know we love Holly Jackson. I think she's like the queen of YA mystery thrillers. This one is my favorite of hers so far. It's exactly what the title entails. A girl named Rachel Price disappeared years ago and now her daughter Belle and her family are being interviewed for this documentary that they're making about her mom and then Rachel Price reappears. So we're unpacking everything that that entails. This one blew my mind. I think it's so good. The ending had so many different twists and turns. There's a spooky aspect about it. I remember kind of being scared at some scenes, but I loved it. It was one of my favorite book club books that we've had. So definitely add to your fall TBR. So we're going to end off on a cozy mystery and it is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murders by Jesse Q. Satanto. Vera Wong ends up finding a dead man's body in her tea shop and she decides that she's going to get to the bottom of it herself. Vera Wong was such a fun character to read about and I loved the found family that we got as well. I don't know why, but found family is just fall. It's just cozy. But this is such a perfect, heartwarming, cozy mystery that I'll always recommend in the fall time. So that was all of our fall recommendations. And now we're going to talk about books we plan on reading this fall. The first book I know I want to read this fall is The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. This is a horror novel. And I believe we're following this woman who has an obsession with eyeballs. And I think it evolves into something more as it goes on. It sounds creepy and I don't do the best with body parts, but I'm very interested and I've heard good things about it. So I know it's one that I'm gonna have to read. The first one I have is The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. I've seen this book all over social media and a lot of people say it reminds them of Gilmore Girls. When Jeannie's aunt gives her the beloved Pumpkin Spice Cafe in the small town of Dream Harbor, Jeannie jumps at the chance for a fresh start away from her very dull desk job. Logan is a local farmer who avoids Dream Harbor's gossip at all costs, but Jeannie's arrival disrupts Logan's routine and he wants nothing to do with the irritatingly upbeat new girl. Tropes, grumpy sunshine, small town, and found family. Those are all of my favorite things. And you make Skillmore Girls in there, that's going to be a perfect read. A cozy fall read I was supposed to read last year and didn't is In the Company of Witches by R. Lee Wallace. This is one of my most anticipated fall reads, so I cannot wait to get to it. It says, when a guest dies in the B&B she helps her aunt run, a young witch must rely on some good old-fashioned investigating to clear her aunt's name in this magical and charming new cozy mystery. That sounds so cute. I could only find the magical <laughs> market version of this book. I don't know if they make a bigger paperback, but I just can't wait to start this. It's gonna have all the right vibes. The next one I want to read is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I keep seeing all kinds of things about this movie that we all love and have watched a long time ago, but it's back in theaters now because it's the 15th year anniversary and I just find it crazy that I've never read the book. So it's definitely one that I want to read this fall time. Up next, I have House of Glass by Sarah Pekinen. It says Rose Barclay is a nine-year-old girl who witnessed the possible murder of her nanny in the midst of her parents bitter divorce. She immediately stopped speaking. Stella Hudson is a best interest attorney appointed to serve the Council for Children in high conflict custody cases. She realizes the case is even more twisted and the Barclay family is more troubled than she feared. There's also something eerie about the house itself. It's a plastic house with not a single bit of glass to be found. What do you mean? The windows are made out of plastic? Mm. That's creepy. I'm so interested. I cannot wait to learn more about this 
this family in this house. Like I said, I've been loving mystery thrillers, so I'm excited for this one. Up next, we both have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager on our fall TBR. This one actually won the poll for our Literal Besties book club book this month. We obviously love The Only One Left by Riley Sager, so I'm hoping this one is going to go crazy as well. It says a man must contend with the long ago disappearance of his childhood best friend and the dark secrets lurking just beyond the safe confines of his picture perfect neighborhood. The closer Ethan gets to the truth, the more he realizes that no place, be it quiet forest or suburban street, is completely safe and that the past has a way of haunting the present. That sounds very good. Riley Sager can do no wrong, so my hopes are very high for this. If you want to read and talk about the book with us, we will leave the link for that in the description. A gothic novel I have on my TBR is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This one is about the first bride of Dracula and I love the idea that we're gonna get her side of everything that happened. I just know this one's gonna be very atmospheric. I cannot wait to read it. This is definitely gonna set the scene for October, I think. The next one I have is The Woman by Kristen Hanna. If anyone can get me out of a reading slump, it is Miss Kristen Hanna. I rarely give out five stars and I gave her book The Nightingale five stars, so I'm hoping that the woman will be able to do the same for me. It says the woman at once an intimate portrait of coming of age in a dangerous time and an epic tale of a nation divided. It just seems like one I have to read this fall and it'll be perfect because I know it's going to get me out of the slump I've been in. Up next I have a paranormal mystery thriller and it is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Four roommates bond over their whispered fears, their budding friendships blossoming until one of them mysteriously disappears. And now it's 2014, there's a journalist, Fiona, and she's gonna try and figure out what happened. I loved The Sundown Motel by this author, and then I didn't love The Book of Cold Cases. So this one is gonna be the determining factor on whether or not I'm gonna continue reading books by this author. I have to start Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I just know this is going to be a series that I absolutely love. I've just been scared to start it because these books are gonna be a commitment. The Addicted slash Calloway Sister series was such a hard commitment for me just because there's so many books and they're thick books. I'm sure it's going to be the same with this series but I know I'm going to love the characters and the story but I think the fall will be a good time for me to start this. The next one I have is A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. Another one I was supposed to read last fall and didn't but it is on my TBR for this year. This to me always gives cozy because it's baking and wizardry but I believe it's also a mystery because there ends up being a murder. This one I'm thinking of reading in November because it's spooky but also kind of like gingerbreads giving me winter. Mm -hmm. We'll see. The last one I have is the most intimidating and it is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. If I don't read this book by the end of the year I'm just gonna throw them all out. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure you read this book. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I can't believe I haven't finished this series. It's embarrassing. It's sad. It's unacceptable. Exactly. And this is the best book in the series. That's a crazy statement. And I'll say it again. <laughs> it's just, it's past due at this point. So if I don't read it, bully me in the comments. I'm making you read it. Okay. So that is all of our fall recommendations along with all of the books we plan to read this fall. The fall and winter seasons are our favorite seasons, so these upcoming months are our months. We have so many books to get to, but if you have some recommendations for us, please let us know and let us know what books you plan to read this fall. Another reminder that our Literal Besties book club link will be in the description. It's free to join, so if you want to read with us this month, definitely check it out. That's pretty much it for today's video though, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys next time. Is that fall? Hey, football season comes back. Oh, in the fall. you're right, you're right. If you're gonna read any YA, no, <laughs> I'm like, don't read yours. No, no, no. <laughs>